I came across a very interesting, uh, I was going to say article, I guess it was kind of an article, it was a very, um, it was a long form social media post on Cohost, which is one of the many uh, new social networks that have cropped up in, in the in the ashes of Twitter. And it was about game design and how it's linked to the artistic vision of a game. And it's something that I haven't really thought about all that much. I just that's not strictly true. I kind of have, but not in the way that it was talking about. So the specific examples that it brought up were like in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild where there are vast swathes of landscape with just nothing in them. Absolutely nothing in them. Uh, you can just wander across and uh, maybe you'll come across some monsters, but chances are you'll come across nothing. And apparently, lots of people were complaining about that. And to me, it's... Well, you've kind of got to have that stuff or else... Well, for one thing, if you could just get everywhere like that, first of all, then you'd be moaning, then people are bemoaning that the world was tiny. Because, of course. But the other issue is you'd be done with it in five minutes. If you, if, if there were n none of these nice big spaces to, to get lost in, then it wouldn't feel like an adventure. It'd just feel like, oh, I'm going this and I'm doing this. It's all a bit tedious, really. And um, the other thing that they brought up was the weapon degradation system, the much maligned weapon degradation system in, in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Shut up. Whereby uh, your weapons will break very, very easily. You can find the nicest sword in the world and you can use it like ten times and it'll smash to pieces. And when... Breath of the Wild was released. That was the big thing uh, that everybody complained about. And after you play it for a while, you realise that it's not really that much of an issue because it encourages you to use your weapons uh, because, well, they're going to break anyway, so you might as well try them out because you, you probably get another one soon enough. Um, I remember people were complaining that, oh, you've, you've got this really nice sword and you, you end up using it up and you've got to use a stick. And... I've played through the game twice now, and that's never, ever happened to me. Granted, I've had to go back to like, the very basics at the start of the game before you um, come across any decent equipment, but by the time you're getting decent equipment, it's everywhere. You can just get it. So it's an argument against something that, well, again, is part of the uh, vision of the game, and it slows it down. If you had the best weapon ever to start with, Again, you, you're you just removing game from the game. You, you're removing kind of the point of it. And, well, on a similar note, I was, I was looking at Little Gator Game on Steam. I played that on the Switch and it was a fabulous game. I can think of nothing wrong with it, really. And, lo and behold, I saw a negative review. Uh, and it... Really? Why is everybody talking now? <laughs> so... I will uh, paraphrase here. The review complains that you're on a small island and you smash cardboard and you do a couple of random fetch quests and then you do the same again on a bigger island. And uh, they complain that there's there's things like quest markers missing and that the game is essentially just a load of fetch quests. And yeah, if you really boil it down then totally, it's just a bunch of fetch quests. But there's more to it than that. The, the whole aesthetic and the whole, the, the whole plot, the whole reason why you're doing all the things that you do in the game, that's part of the game as well. That's why I always say that graphics are important in a game, because they are one part of the experience, and they are a major part of the experience because it's what you see. There is just an important part of the experience as the audio and the, the narrative and the gameplay. Not everything's got to be... Well, this, this post has kind of made me realise um, that not everything has got to be this ultra-playable, uh, works-perfectly thing. One only has to look at the likes of Cruelty Squad and... Um, oh, there's, there's another game that I thought of and... Uh, 
Well, I suppose a good example is flipping Death Stranding. That game is tedious as all balls, but it's tedious as all balls on purpose. Might not be for everybody, but... <laughs> Newsflash, you're not everybody. <laughs> uh, I imagine that everybody watching this will probably understand and agree with what I'm saying. And I also would agree that, you know, playability is important, because if your game is completely unplayable and bug-ridden and is a chore to play, then, well, games are also supposed to be fun. So, you know, that's that's an important thing to take into account. But, well, there's, there's, a, there's a big gap between entirely unplayable and plays the same as every other damn game. And in between that is where creativity lies. Uh, anyway, that's uh, that's today. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all. Um, oh yeah, tomorrow. 